Well, hey, everybody, and welcome back to Fistic Java Save the Universe. I am Fist25, and uh, we're here today to do yet another ship review. This time it's on this uh, orange behemoth behind me, the Argo Mole. And uh, yeah, we're over here at uh, HDMS Edmund, and we're going to take this puppy out for a spin. And uh, yeah, let's roll that intro. Okay, so welcome back. Um, thanks for tuning into the channel. And uh, let's take a look around the Argo Mole. I, we've done numerous videos about the mole, but we have yet to do like an actual guide to the ship. This is not going to be a mining tutorial. This is not going to be hey, what gadgets to use or what consumables to use, things like that. But this is more going to be like the actual ship itself. And so it, it might be a little short. I don't know. I make long videos. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. It's not a cargo ship. So we'll probably do just a scotch of mining. Um, but yeah, let's get on with it. All right. So the Arco Mole. Um, you'll have to excuse my voice here because I am a little... I'm recovering from a cold. And uh, it sucks. So... Um, we're on the beautiful planet of, uh, Hurston here with all the, the new cloud tech and stuff on 317 PTU and here, and the wind is just now kicking up because Hurston's like the windiest planet in the universe, apparently. Um, anyway, uh, up top there is, uh, the, uh, all the, uh, the, the cockpit stuff for the mole. Um, by the way, the word mole from uh, stands for multi-operator laser extractor. And what this is, is it's a medium-sized uh, multi-crew mining ship. Uh, it's got three independent mining turrets. And uh, eh, it says, the brochure says comprehensive uh, crew facilities. It's not really comprehensive. Um, you're not going to get a continental breakfast here. Uh, but it is a, a ship for uh, efficient multi-crew mining. Um, it's, it actually has quite a bit of mining storage on it too, which we'll get to when we, when we do that part of the walk around. So first and foremost is the central, uh, the central mining laser mining area. Um, this is these, all the mining cabs, there's three separate cabs. This cab right here is the forward one and it's, it's, uh, accessible, um, right behind the, the bridge. And you can have different mining lasers on each one of your mining stations. Um, I believe this one happens to be an Impact 2 mining laser. And I have a Landsat 2 and a Helix 2 on my other two stations. Um, coming around to the starboard side of the aircraft, uh, you can see that just up top, not that this is going to be a fighter ship uh, by any means, but uh, there are two size 2 guns. And that's it. They're not remote control. They're pilot control. That's that, that's all you get. Two size two guns. Um, so you're not going to be doing any fighting in this because it is a behemoth of a ship to move around. It is very slow, very bulky, but it's supposed to be. It's it's a mining ship. It's an industrial type of ship. Um, you can see this this guy right here. This. I, I want to say it's an engine, but really it's a, I don't even know what to call it. This thruster leg right now is in the vertical position. Um, that and the back one over here, they will transform to the vertical position when you turn VTOL on. And it's the same thing on the other side. So you're going to need VTOL to, to have any type of hovering or to have any type of really decent slash controlled landing. Um, when you turn VTOL off, they will go back in, uh, they will rotate around 90 degrees and they will provide forward thrust uh, when you're ready for that. Tucked in back behind this little shield plating, this little outer wall here, is uh, my other mining laser. This is the starboard side laser. Um, I don't remember if this is the land center of the helix, but uh, there is uh, lasers on the left and the right. 
Um, but this is kind of where where this is. And this this part here will, uh, there's the cab for it up there. That's where you sit and do your mining. That part will extend out from the ship, as will the center cab. It will extend forward, and you will have a lot of articulation to move your lasers around. And we'll see that a little bit later on in the video. These guys right here, they're affectionately known as uh, saddlebags. But really what they are, I guess their their official name is mineral pots. And the mole actually carries 24 of these mineral pots in a collapsed form. Well, each of these mineral pots can hold 12 SCU of mined minerals. The eventual goal of the mining here, uh, and these are just like the mineral pods on a prospector, is that once you fill these up, you can drop them off and then they can be collected either by uh, your refinery ship, which we might have one day with the Expanse, or you can collect them with a cargo hauler and take them off to a refinery. And that way the mole can then use some more of its collapsible mineral pods, open those up and then keep mining. Um, since there's eight total pods and there's uh, eight pods at installed at any one time, 24 total pods, you can do that up to three times before the mole will have to go back and restock its mineral pods. Um, also, the three mining heads, uh, what that is called, it's a model called trilateral mining. Um, they you, you can all mine the same rock or you can all mine different rocks at the same time. So different lasers with different consumables provide different benefits and they do all stack. So if you have a land set, which helps uh, with instability in a rock, but doesn't have a lot of power and you have a helix as well, which has a lot of power, but also adds instability, they will cancel out, but you will get the benefits of both. So you will lower the instability of the rock and increase the power at the same time because you're using the helix. Um, so there's some things you can do uh, with all three mining laser heads. And I have a video for that. It's called uh, the Argo Mole Tips and Tricks. And uh, if you want to check that out, uh, it should be up in the top corner. Uh, if not, it is on uh, one of my playlists for mining. Okay, coming in the back here, we can see it's a lot of piping, a lot of industrial look here. And I really actually do like the aesthetic of the ship. It's it's the black and the orange. It's very pretty. I'm not sure why there's a heat signature coming from this because the engines are off. But uh, uh, we can see that it's a tricycle landing gear configuration with a, a bunch of feet here in the back and a foot here and there in the front. And as we head towards the back of the spacecraft, we again see that vertical thruster leg. And then we also see the back thrusters. Now, those thrusters right now are kind of in a horizontal configuration. When you raise up the landing gear, they will turn 45 degrees. And it kind of, it's, it's a cool little transformer animation for the ship. Uh, I think it's actually pretty neat uh, the, way, the way it looks when it's actually flying with, with all six. Oh, wait, all eight of its thrusters or engines or whatever you want to call them uh, going. This stuff over here, I'm not 100% sure like what this is for or why this is there. It says machinery may move suddenly. So maybe that's how it uh, poops out the, the mineral pods. I'm just not sure. There's, I think there's still a lot of unknowns with, uh, with the Argo Mole and, and how CIG is going to implement some of, the, some of the other mining stuff that's going on. As we come around to the port side, we can see it's a mirror image of the starboard side. And uh, yes, I do have a different mining head on there. I think that one is the Lancet, and the starboard side was the Helix. As we move under it, uh, let's see, move under the pods here. You can actually, you'll automatically duck when you do that. And then uh, we have our, our elevator here. If we move towards the back, there's really nothing much to show you. There's nothing interactable or anything like that. Uh, one thing about the mole is that this elevator can be a pain to activate. Um, typically, I kind of stand under the light. Yeah, if you heard that. And I push. I usually get th this target here in the center of my HUD here. It turns to a circle. And I click that, and it lowers the elevator. So that's typically how I get into the elevator 
of the Argo Bowl. So let's uh, get into the only entrance and let's do an interior tour of the Argo Bowl. So we'll get inside the elevator. We will hit use. That guy uh, turns up and it will push itself down. All right, so we are on actually the the, the lower deck of the Argo Mole. Um, you see the elevator right here. Uh, there's not much to it. it. It looks very industrial. Looks like there's a lot of filters and things like that. Um, over here is apparently where your jump drive is going to be, but nothing over here is interactable. Uh, these none of these screens or anything like that uh, currently work for any type of engineering or anything like that. Um, there's no nothing to be opened for component access, but I assume this is where components uh, are going to be located. Uh, to the uh, port side here, because we're facing forward here, uh, this is going to be the entrance into the port mining laser. So you're going to come in here to this section because it actually detaches from the ship. Um, yeah, you're going to get in here, and here's the port mining laser bay. We're going to... We're going to check out this cab and how this functions when we get up into space. This part right here will actually disconnect from the ship. So to get back into the ship, you'll have to bring the turn the laser off and come back inside. Now, this guy right here, excuse me, I don't know exactly what these are for. Um, I know it's not a toilet or anything like that. Maybe it's a decontamination area. Um, I just, maybe it's an injection pod. I don't think it is, but I, I just don't know what that's for. Maybe it's a storage area. There's no signings or anything like that, uh, to say what it does. It's just, uh, something that doesn't close either. Cause when you click, there's no close after it's open. Yeah. So that's, uh, that is the, the port pod. You actually have to physically open these doors. There we go. The starboard pod is exactly the same. Um, so I'm not going to actually uh, show you that one. We'll show you that one in space. But we're going to take the only way upstairs, which is this ladder here on the starboard side. So we'll climb the ladder. We'll come up to this uh, little small compartment here. We'll open the door into our galley area and our crew dining facility. Looks like there's possibly some components access here, um, but nothing is interactable. We do have our table um, where we can eat our chow and I guess listen to some tunes or something like that. Uh, maybe that's a radio. Um, there is a some kind of a food mush dispenser here uh, that will feed the crew. Uh, please keep it clean. This area is a shared space. Uh, so you have a little bit of counter space, but nothing down here is interactable. There looks like some food trays down there. Um, <coughs> okay, heading, heading aft, there is a door. It does open by itself. As we come in, we have a couple more of these uh, areas. Now, what I think these areas are possibly going to be for is storage of a suit, right? You don't want to be out in one of the mining pods and not have access to a suit. And maybe you're going to be in civilian clothes inside the ship, and then you need to um, go into a suit to actually go into the pod just in case it depressurizes or something like that. So uh, there's one on, on either side, and then we can see there are four different bets. One, two, three, four. So that leaves you the ability to have a pilot and then three different mining stations all going at the same time. And the whole crew can sleep and eat and, and, and share a really tight, cozy space with each other. Uh, these beds do work, and you can log out in them if you choose to. There is one head in the, in the back here. Uh, let me open the door. It is a full toilet system, uh, meaning it's a shower and a toilet. So if we click open here, our toilet seat opens up and our black toilet paper, I guess, from Argo, uh, it, it comes out. And I believe that is the shower. Let me see what happens when I click open. Is that like a cargo compartment? What is down there? I don't exactly know what's down there. Uh, 
There's our shower right there. Uh, hot and cold and a toilet seat. So there is the restroom, folks. Uh, hygiene will be important one day, so I hope they, they will be working at that time. There's no other interactables in here. Okay, let's head forward. We'll go past the galley section and, and the crew quarters here. As we make our way forward, this section here, I, I'm not sure what these engines actually power, but my guess is these are kind of what power the mining lasers. And I'm guessing there at some point there will be some kind of uh, engineering gameplay to go with uh, these engines, uh, which would be pretty cool because you want to make sure your mining lasers are tuned. This ladder well down here leads to, we're not actually going to go down. <laughs> that leads to the center mining turret. And we will go down there eventually. Just, uh, we need to, I want to get off the ground here first. Going through the last forward door. If it opens. All right, folks. So sorry about that. We, uh, we ended up having a 30 K and that's why. Um, I had to stop the video and reload and the doors wouldn't open and things like that. But we're back into another server. And uh, so let's go ahead and show off the cockpit here uh, going all the way forward. You can see it's pretty uh, industrial design still. A lot of piping and things like that going through the cockpit. Um, there is no interactables that I know about other than the, the actual seats and the MFDs and things like that. But uh, it is a two-person cockpit, a pilot and a co-pilot. So again, multiple roles are possible um, in this ship. This is supposed to be a four-person ship. Let's go ahead and enter the pilot seat. Okay, 317 still has those weird freezes there. Um, so here we are in the in the cockpit and let's take a look around. It's pretty decent glass as far as I can tell. It's very misc like it's very it's still a very pretty thin band of glass and there is nothing at the top or the bottom. It's just what you can see out there, but it's it's fairly tall enough to be able to do what you need to do. Um, considering this is, you know, the pilot seat for mining, not not too bad. Let's see what the, the actual pilot has as far as controls. You can see we do have a 2D radar right here in front of us. Uh, it's too bad. I wish it was 3D, but uh, it does, you know, work for what it's supposed to do. There is no, like, ejection mechanism down there. Um, on the left stick, it's a whole SAS setup for the pilot and the co-pilot. There's, oh, look, at, there's just an exit over here to the right, but there's no, no buttons or anything to, anything to hit like that on the sticks. Coming up to the top, we can see we have three multifunction displays in our uh, warning panel up here, along with volatile cargo if we need to dump some volatile quantanium. Um, let's see here. It's hard to believe that we don't have buttons to open up cargo or, or things like that. Um, go ahead and turn our engines on. I might just be missing them. I might just be, uh, well, there we go. Okay. On the bottom here of the center console, looks like we have our open exterior pressed on lock and to the left, there's, uh, like a power button somewhere. There it is. Power off, power on and engine on engine off. So there's no like button, but it's just, it's just kind of there. And that's really it. Other than changing around your displays here, which are not too bad. At least we have a ship status on there. Um, and there we go, guys. That is the Argo Mole uh, with the interior tour. Let's go ahead and uh, do an external view. This is with VTOL down, by the way, um, and landing gear down. Um, we can see the ship is a very bright orange in color. Very, a very neat looking orange. I love the Argo orange. It definitely has a unique profile, a very industrial type ship. Um, let's go ahead and cycle the VTOL. And you can see where those engines will uh, go from vertical to horizontal. Well, they will provide uh, forward thrust when need be. And uh, 
lifting thrust when when need be as well. And uh, this, I can tell you, flying around this thing is not very stable when you when you're on a high gravity planet or moon. You need to have your VTOL on, uh, or else you're just going to fall like a rock. So if you do find yourself falling like a rock, turn your VTOL on. You'll still have forward thrust with these rear engines, but the VTOL will provide that stability. In space, it's it's obviously much different, right, with no gravity. So let's uh, reset our view here, and let's go ahead and take off, and uh, we'll cycle our landing gear. This is just space bar right there. And we can come to a decent hover. Um, you can see it is, uh, like most ships in the game, uh, it lifts butt first much more than nose first. And our, our VTOL engines are working uh, fairly well at keeping us level. Now, watch when I cycle the landing gear and watch those rear engines. Let's go ahead and hit in. So the gear comes up and then those engines transform and the VTOLs kind of move inward. And that gives us our configuration to actually go forward. Let's zoom out a little bit. And there we go. We're moving along at a, at a decent clip, heading off into the, uh, the sun here at uh, Hurston at Edmonds. And let's go ahead and cycle the VTOL here. Now, with the wind and everything coming in for a landing, you're going to want to have your VTOL on. Let's see if we can even see we're still we're falling right now. You can see our velocity uh, vector is going to the bottom. So we're going to cycle our VTOL back on. It's automatically coming back up. If you can see that that part right there, we're going to want to give us some upward thrust. Even I'm going to use some boost on it as well. So you're probably going to you want to keep that uh, that going until you get a little bit less gravity keep keep your VTOL on until you get less gravity let's look at the yaw in atmosphere as you can tell it is not good it's very slow very very slow this is a big ship it weighs a lot it's industrial it's not made to be a maneuverable ship And there we go. So we have pretty much just done a 180 and switched directions using yaw. We're going to give ourselves a little more vertical thrust going upwards, even using some boost. So I want to make sure we don't crash when we do things. Um, you notice I'm not even at SCM speed right now. Even though I have cruise control on and we are... <clears throat> we're going to come to close to a zero... Uh, pitch on the pitch ladder. We're, we're still climbing in altitude, but um, so it's it's pretty darn slow in atmosphere. 118 SCM right here kind of stabilizes out. Let's turn off VTOL. You notice we're dropping now, right? So we're going to keep it back on. Same scenario here. I don't want to do any type of rolling until we get a little more. Uh, so we get out of the atmosphere a little bit more. So let's let's just point our nose upwards. And we will just head on out of here. Let's give ourselves a little bit of boost. So I can tell you already the flight characteristics in atmosphere, not great. Not great at all. But as long as you have your, your VTOL on again, you should remain fairly stable. It's when you turn that VTOL off that things can go pretty darn crazy. Now that I actually have some some uh, some altitude, I'm going to level off here. And we're just going to do a roll check. So you can see how slow and lazily the ship rolls in atmosphere. Pretty darn slow. And you usually roll as the, the fast, fastest characteristic of, uh, of a ship in flight. And let's go ahead and attempt a full loop with pitch. Again, extremely slow. Getting faster as we kind of come around, but then as we come back up and level off, uh, back to slow. So there we go. <laughs> that is uh, pretty much um, the flight characteristics of the Argo Mole. Um, now 
this is one video I'm, I'm actually not going to do a dog fight in the Argo mole. Uh, there's no point in it. It's, it's yes. It, can it defend itself? No, it can't. Um, you should have a friend, uh, help you. Yes. You have two guns out there. Like look at our guns there. They're, they're not, they're just not going to do anything for you. They're size two. They're, they're pretty underpowered considering the size of the ship. If there's any other purpose for guns, uh, in the game in the future, maybe there'll be a purpose, but there's no point in dogfighting anybody in this ship ever at any time. Um, it, I mean, last ditch, if you have to, uh, try to use your guns to do something, go ahead. But any, almost any ship that's going to fight you should be much more maneuverable than you. And so you're probably going to lose, um, size two shields do get eaten up, uh, fairly quickly. Um, so that's just, that's just how it is. Let's, uh, let's head up to the 90 degree, uh, on the pitch ladder and let's engage our boost and just get out of this atmosphere. I'm going to turn off my VTOL at this point. And, uh, we're just going to head out into space as we clear the clouds over at Hurston. There we go. So that was actually a decent amount of boost. And once you clear 12,000 meters, you're able to quantum uh, around the Hurston planet. Um, let's see. There's a there's Ariel right there. Let's just go ahead and get ourselves into space. OK, and one thing I did before I took the ship out was I did put a different quantum drive on it. The quantum drive that it comes with is industrial, so it's very durable, but also extremely slow. So floating around aerial, orange on orange, right? How about that? Let's uh, let's turn off aerial here and let's actually, uh, let's see how fast the ship can go in space. Oh, there we go. Now the game kind of caught up with me. You can see our engines are going. That's what it looks like when it's in boost. OK, let's get our top speed here. And it looks like it's very slow to accelerate. Looks like 1090, 1089, 1090 is our top speed. And now we'll go back down to SCM speed. We'll check to see what our retros look like. You see on the very front there is our retro thrusters. And that is what is attempting to slow us down. Very slowly again. So we can hold down X to try and, and we'll, we'll try to use our boost to help us slow down as well. Okay, and I am out of boost at this point. It's just really slow, guys, to uh, to to speed up, to slow down. And you know what? That's OK, because at the end of the day, it's a mining ship. And that's kind of what mining ships. They're, they're made to mine. They're not made to be very maneuverable or anything like that. Although I think a little bit more maneuverability might actually help in this case. So we are nearing our SCM speed. There we go. Retro thrusters shut off and we're right at about 128 for SCM speed. Let's check our yaw in SCM in space. Much better. Much better in space. That's our OK. So that's our counter to slow down our pitch. <laughs> uh, much better than in atmosphere, but still pretty bad. And here is our roll in space. So nothing great out there, but you know, it is, it is what it is. This is, this is how it goes. So one thing we are going to do, we are going to make a trip to her L two, I believe. Oh, and, a, and apparently they're going to scam me. So <laughs> notice I don't even see anything on the radar. 
So I don't see any anybody up here, but apparently somebody is up there. Somebody with security. God, why is the arrow pointing that way if it's never going to stop? Come on. You see how slow this thing moves? Let's look how much faster security is than me, and he's in a gladius. There you go. Thanks, Mr. Gladius. Okay, so we're going to go to Hurrell 2, and we're going to, uh, uh lo excuse me, load up on, uh, components and things like that. We're going to go down to the refinery and, uh, we'll, we'll stock up on some stuff and see what we, and we'll actually go into the loadout and load that stuff into the ship and we'll see what kind of mining lasers are available down there. Um, and mining gadgets. And then we'll take the ship out briefly mining around, uh, her L2. And then really guys, that's about it. There's no chase camera dogfight in the mole. Um, we might get a few people loaded up into the mole to do some mining, just to show you what three person mining looks like. But other than that, that'll wrap up the video. So stay tuned for her L2. All right, guys. So here we are in the refinery center of her L2. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at the, the store on the bottom section of the refinery. First thing we're going to do is look at i believe utility and we'll look at mining modules so as long as you have replaced your mining head with anything other than the default arbor you should have three different slots for mining modules her l2 i find has some pretty darn good ones um not the best ones uh, as far as i'm concerned but good ones so i like to use uh fltr's filters um and apparently they're not loading in <laughs> of course this is ptu and we're well into ptu so uh still a lot of errors this one does have filter l's and maybe that's what comes with uh 317 and her l2 i usually like the filter xls uh, they're a little bit more expensive but uh, they do filter out a little bit more of the inert materials so i'm gonna grab two for each laser so i'm gonna grab six total and I, I usually equip two per laser. Um, and then sometimes I grab things like an optimum module, uh, which gives me a bigger size charge window. Uh, that helps with uh, like things like the Lancet. Um, it already has a big charge window, but this helps with heat uh, generation uh, and things like that. So I'll at least grab one of those. Let's see, uh, the lifeline module, I usually buy one and I put that in with the helix just in case I get a little too, uh, a little too far into the red. Um, and with the impact, which is kind of the, in the middle between a helix and a land set, it's, it's in my opinion, it's, it's probably the most balanced mining laser in the game. Um, and I can crack almost anything with it. Um, I don't even know if I have what I'm looking for in here. The Focus 3, that's not what I'm looking for. The Riger, nope. Uh, the Torrent, I, you know, we really need to do, Joe and I need to do a new video on on these. And we we probably will when, uh, when it gets a little bit more mature. Um, but maybe it's a Stampede. Yeah, Stampede kind of kicks everything and gets it going. Um, then there's also the Rhyme module. Uh, that is not what I'm looking for. Neither is the... Well, the 4L is not too bad. Um, and I believe that's a passive module. So sure, let's, let's grab a 4L for now. Okay, and if you don't have mining heads, you should be able to actually go to mining heads and you can pick up a land set here. Uh, let's see, it's... Well, it looks like you can only pick up a Landsat size one here. That doesn't work on the mole. The mole is all size two lasers. So you can pick up an Impact two, um, a Klein size two, and a Hofstad size two. So I was able to pick up a lot of stuff actually at uh, Lorville. So I guess buy your 
your mining, your mining ads at Lorville. Um, as far as gadgets go, I already have a few gadgets, but, uh, you know, you can buy some more of them. Um, I believe I have, let's buy at least one of all of them. The OptiMax, uh, lowers the instability of the rock, uh, gives you a better charge rate and a better charge window, but it also makes the rock 15% more resistant and it. Uh, increases shatter damage. Uh, so it depends on what laser you're going to use to which uh, gadget you should use. The wave shift here lowers the resistance of the rock, provides a higher charge window, um, higher instability, higher overcharge rate, and higher shatter damage. But I think the wave shift is really good with the Lancet mining laser. The Sabir uh, lowers the instability. Uh, that's good for the Helix, but it also lowers the optimal charge window and charge rate, which is actually probably good for the Helix as well. Um, use that with an Optimum and you might just be in business. And then the Bormax lowers the resistance of the rock. Uh, also, so this would also be really good for the land set, although the optimal charge rate is lower. So it's going to take you a while. It's going to take you longer to actually mine. Um, but you should have an easier time mining with the bore max. So for something like the impact, the best gadget I would probably recommend would be either the the wave shift, eh, I don't know. Maybe the wave shift because instability is not too bad with the impact mining laser. Um, and that's really about it. You need to buy here. If you do need to buy uh, like a mining tool and a mining bit, you can buy that here as well as armor and undersuits and things like that. So let's exit out of that menu. We will bring up our mobile glass. And we will select the Argo Mole as our ship. You can see I have a crossfield in here for a quantum drive. Uh, I, I updated, upgraded that in Lorville. They don't sell them in Lorville. I borrowed it from another one of my ships. Um, as far as weapons go, don't care. Okay, so here's my mining heads. Uh, my center mining head is the Impact 2, which we were going to put the 4L on there. And then we we're going to do a filter. Um, oh gosh, did that not save? There we go. Yep, I clicked it. There we go. For the land set, we were going to use an optimum and then two filters. What the filters do is they just get rid of an uh, inert material as you're sucking things up. And that, that helps get you more minerals. And there we go. For the Helix, we put two filters in a lifeline module. We'll save that loadout. And boom. Okay, so let's go hop into the mole. And uh, let's go find an asteroid here in space. And we'll do a solo mining uh, with the... And then we'll actually show off all the mining cabs. And uh, we'll do a little bit of that. And uh, then we'll go into the actual loadout section at Urkel.Games. We'll go into the brochure, the videos. And then maybe we'll close out with uh, a true multi-crew mining. So stay tuned. All right, everybody. So we pulled our mole out. And we're going to go ahead and uh, enter it from the elevator. There's a little trick to open the... Uh, the elevator door, it's up here by the uh, saddlebags. And there we go. Okay, we'll go ahead and climb the ladder to go upstairs. Before we sit down, we're going to go ahead and uh, go into our inventory and I'll make sure that we bring in our uh, mining gadgets into the ship. Otherwise, they'll stay at the station. They're too big to fit inside a backpack. So 
just FYI on that one. Um, you notice I already have a wave shift here on, on the bottom of my backpack. It is so beautiful and peaceful out here at the mining stations. Okay, it looks like we're fired up. I always use VTOL um, to get up and out. And then as soon as we're lifted off, we can switch the VTOL and the landing gear off. And we're just going to head to one of these uh, asteroids here. If you don't know how to scan in the game, just uh, hit the V key. And V will bring you into the scan mode and then hit tab and you'll get uh, pings. And then you're looking for these little boxes all around, right? So we see, hopefully there's a rock out here at about 11 kilometers. We're gonna hit, no, we're not gonna hit quantum. <laughs> We're going to turn off our cruise control. We're going to slow down to SCM speed. And we can ping again without scanning just by hitting tab. If we, if we have that option turned on, usually all these little circles around it do indicate there's a rock in there somewhere. I like to keep my ping uh, fairly active. And I'm not interested really in scanning the rock until I get much, much closer than uh, three kilometers. Usually once we get close enough, the rock here will turn into this little white diamond and then it will actually turn into like a rock icon, just like it just did. And we'll be able to scan that once we get closer. I found that coming from further back, it just doesn't doesn't help when scanning. So we're going to use our boost to slow down. We'll hit V to go into scan mode. The rock is outlined in yellow. Might even want to get a little bit closer. And then we'll hold down our left mouse button, our primary fire button, to start the scan. You can see the HUD says scanning on top. And so this rock is gold, borace, and corundum, mostly. Which is not, this is not normally a rock I would actually mine because it's so low in gold and borace and and even corundum. Most of this rock is inert materials. But for the purposes of this video, we are going to, we are going to actually mine this rock. So we're going to turn scanning mode off and we're just going to kind of center ourselves in front of the rock here. Now I want you to take a look at where the mining lasers are in comparison to the asteroid. As you can see, the laser there, they're going to, like the center laser, the main cap, it's going to come down a little bit and then it's going to be able to articulate. So we might want to move a little bit closer to the rock, something like that. The side lasers, they're going to come out and then they're going to come forward and down. And then we'll, we'll be able to uh, uh, they'll be able to articulate on it as well, but they're not going to have as much functionality. That's why this this vehicle is better for multi-crew mining because using our powers of communication, we can uh, talk to, to the pilot and have them move the ship as needed. But in general, if you're solo mining, you want to kind of be above the rock a little bit, not too far above the rock but just at an angle to where the lasers are going to be able to reach everything. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll exit the pilot seat. And now we're going to go to the center cab, which is down this ladder well. There we go. And it's straight into this seat. All right, guys, so not so funny story. I I actually had an issue with uh, all three mining turrets on the last attempt at this video. 
And the reason was because there was a bug in the PTU where you couldn't power any of them on. So it's now a couple days later. I'm sure my voice probably sounds a little bit better. And uh, let's let's try to hop in these turrets now and see what we can do as far as uh, getting them going. So we are going to the center turret. We're still still at her L2. We actually found a rock that is almost identical to the one uh, found in the first take. So normally to power on this turret um, right here, there's no button or anything like that, but there's just an inner thought prompt power on. And there we go. Turret is powered on and all it does is mine. So it's always in mining mode. So as you can see it, I did park a little bit above this asteroid, but it seems like not far enough. You see how far down the center laser can go and I can only go about halfway, but it's enough to go ahead and get this mined. Um, as you can see down here, I do have the 4L module on there uh, giving us um, a little bit higher instability, but a little bit lower resistance if we do turn that on. Uh, but this rock itself isn't too bad for an impact too. Let's go ahead and try to try to mine it, I guess. I'm not concerned with what's in there, but more or less uh, showing you, you know, more about the ship. So let's kick up the mining power with our mouse wheel. We can see everything's going pretty nice. I'm going to go ahead and use I'm going to hit Alt one and use the 4L module. I don't have to do that with the filters. You see it changes the sound and the look of the mining laser. And I'm going to kick it up to a little bit higher power. It did um, increase the instability, but it lowered the resistance of the rock. So sometimes there is a sweet spot on these rocks. Yeah, there we go. Now, now we're cooking with gas. We're, we're getting the uh, our bar over on the right, uh, getting it, trying to get it close to the green zone. Now we're going to reduce power a little bit keep that sucker in the green zone. And, and, uh, there we go. We're on my, this is a very low mass rock. It's only about 4,000, uh, kilograms. So you can see our rocks, they're kind of splitting off here. They're hitting the mining laser and things like that. But a lot of them are still yellow here, which means we have to crack them even further in order to extract the minerals that are inside them. We're going to stay in this uh, laser. Actually, we're going to come down here. Seeing as how we have a little bit more authority over these guys. Let's scan this asteroid, see what's in there. So gold and corundum, mostly inert. This guy is corundum and gold and borase, uh, half inert. So that might be a good candidate. Borace is worth more. Anything with an ace or an it is typically worth more. And then quantitative is worth the most. This one's a decent candidate. Good, good amount of borace. So let's go ahead and crack this guy. It's only about a thousand in its mass. Um, we could see our, looks like our 4L module is still going. We'll increase the power here with the mouse wheel. We still got to get, you know, we still just like mining before we got to get into the optimal window. Come on, baby, get up in there. And there we go. So now we're going to drastically reduce power because the higher instability made the mining laser jump or made the the optimal window jump a little bit. So we're going to keep power fairly low here, right around 13%. We cracked the rock without going into overload. So no explosions on this one. Sorry, guys. Now we're going to scan each individual rock here. <clears throat> Pardon me on that. We can see that there's a little bit of borace in this. Um, this rock here. Now that they're purple, it means we can extract them. Don't want anything there. There's no borace. It's just corundum and inert. <coughs> oh, drifted. Uh, good, good amount of borace in here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, extract this rock. We're going to right click on the mouse button to change to extraction mode and let's go ahead and extract. Uh, 
okay, we were able to extract. And that's the reason I have these filters on here because it will lower the amount of incoming uh, inert materials. So again, 14% uh, borates, this is a good rock to extract. There we go, that is all extracted. Um, we said we didn't like that one, but this one had a little bit of borace. And, and you know, the corundum will make a little bit of money, not much, but the borace will make a good amount of money. And there we go. So we have extracted everything we wanted to um, from the second rock we cracked. And let's let's go into what the HUD shows us here. Um, we can see our cargo capacity right now, our saddlebags. Total capacity, 96 SCU. We filled up 12.71 of that. And most of it actually happens to be inert material. However, we do have a decent amount of corundum and borace and just a tiny bit of gold. Uh, that borace will still net us a decent profit. So let's hop out of this turret, which is, by the way, guys, the Impact 2 mining laser was, was the one on this turret. And let's go over to the starboard turret. I don't remember if that is the Helix or the Lancet, but it's one of them. So we'll make our way up the stairs, or the ladder, I should say. We'll head aft, and then we'll go back down the ladder like we're going to go outside the ship. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so uh, said, I said we're going to go out the starboard side here. So as we go out the starboard side door, you can see there's another uh, little place here. I'm not sure if this is an ejection pod or storage. It's probably suit storage, and it's a door we also can't close. Just because when you're in this compartment as is, it is still pressurized. Once we actually get into the seat over here, this entire section right here will will clip off and it'll detach from the ship. Um, probably meaning this section here is depressurized. I don't know. It, it's probably still pressurized, but just in case you're going to see this section of the ship right here kind of change as it as it folds away and then will be revealed. So let's go ahead and enter this turret. There we go. You can see on the left side of the screen, we kind of went away from the ship a little bit. And here we go. Okay. So now we're in the starboard turret. Looking for my inner thought. There's power on. Um, this turret happens to be the Helix 2. So this is the Helix 2. And we have a filter, another filter. And then we have a lifeline well, so just in case we get into the red, we can uh, we can activate by hitting Alt 2 because it's in the second position. We can move uh, the whole charge level down lower. So we don't have a whole lot of movement up here. Uh, we, we probably, you know, this is why you have another person driving the ship. You ask them to roll a little bit or move up a little bit to be able to give this mining arm a little bit more uh, movement and articulation. I can go down quite a bit, um, but as far as going up, I am limited. Let me show you what the view looks like outside the ship. And see, there's our mining arm right here. And, uh, you know, we can move it around quite a bit, but it can only go up so far. And usually that's what stops my limitation. Um, there's, there's a good view of the starboard mining laser all right let's go back into the cockpit here <coughs> this guy only has three percent bore so probably not worth it let's scan this guy um it has a decent amount of gold that might be worth something this guy is 12 percent bore so that definitely may be worth something uh we already looked at the purple and we'll probably save those guys for the land set. So let's go ahead and notice where our effective range over here. We are not optimum, but we are sufficient. And especially with the helix, there's enough power out here to crack this guy. <coughs> and it's a pretty low mass rock anyway. Okay, so we see our instability and our resistance. I haven't even increased power yet. We're, we're still looking good. 
let's start increasing power. I'm careful on the helix because you can overpower something real easy, especially something this low mass. So I'm already going back down. Probably going 1%. <coughs> As my optimum snakes down, I'll give it a little more gas, give it a little more power, and just play with that optimal window. And boom. Okay. We have cracked that rock, and as, as the heat fades, we can switch to our extraction mode and just kind of wait for the heat to fade out. Okay, looking good. Um, and there we go, 32% gold, corundum, 12% borays. And let's go ahead and suck this up. You you do suck up things slower having the filter modules, but you suck up less inert. So it's 100% worth it, in my opinion. This guy, 12% Bores. I'm pretty much not going to be picky on this one, but uh, I probably would do 12% regardless. So I'm going to call this one good. Let's hop out of the Helix and let's go over to the port side just to show you what that looks like. There we go, we have melded back with the ship and our protection is also there and the door is open. And we'll head right over to the port side of the ship. So you can see how easy it would be to have three people in this thing mining and how effective and efficient you can be. Once we get the expanse and we have the mobile refinery out here, I mean, we could really just spend a good hour or two out here mining dropping off saddlebags or selling it to the expanse and making quite a bit of money, especially if you're in a team, you know, if you're in a group and you got one guy refining and I mean, you could really make some money quick. Now you still got to make it to the trade division to be able to sell everything. That's where the escorts come on. Um, okay. So this is our land set, which is probably one of my favorite mining lasers. Um, all three of these are my favorite. I think I like the impact the most because it's in between, but the Landsat for uh, for really ease of use, it's the easiest laser to use because it, it takes so long and it doesn't really overcharge. That's why I have the uh, optimum module on here because it gives me a bigger optimal charge window, even though it uh, increases the stability just a little bit. So you see, we can move down a little bit. We said we we're gonna save these guys for the Landsat. Okay, 1% Bore is not, not great. That's probably something I wouldn't do. That one's 100% a nerd. So we don't <coughs> want those guys at all. Uh, I'll take this guy with 19% gold, okay? Now notice how far to the right. I, can, I can't get this guy at all. I can go pretty far to the left, but not to the right. So I'm going to go ahead and use the optimal module. Um, because it is in the top position, again, it is Alt-1 on your keyboard to use the top module. Alt-2 to use the middle, and Alt-3 to use the bottom. Now, these filters are passive, so you don't have to turn them on. They just work. Also, notice that we're a little bit out of range. We could probably do to be a little bit closer, but we're still in sufficient range to go ahead and mine this guy. Okay, so I have the laser on, and I did not hit a module. You'll notice that this optimum bar just got bigger because the type of laser I'm using is a Lancet which inherently lowers the stability and a little bit of the resistance to the rock. So keep an eye on those numbers and this green bar as I use. Uh, I'll give a little bit of power and we'll use the optimum module. Keep an eye on that green bar as well. See in the helix, this thing would already be really heating up. I'm going to go ahead and use the module. Boom. Okay, look at that green bar. It's huge. It's huge. I don't hear that very often, so, you know. <laughs> okay, so now we're in the, in the, the giant green bar here for uh, using the optimum module. And we're going to keep try to keep it in the middle there, and that's how long it lasted. It didn't last very long, guys. Um, well, we're in the red. We're in the red. So now that we're in the red, I think that was a little bit of desync. We want to back it off where this thing's going to explode. And it's going to do it anyway, because the green is going to go. And boom. How bad is this thing going to damage my ship? Actually, not at all. Not at all. <coughs> we luckily avoided 
uh, getting any damage. However, we do got a couple rocks out there that need extracting. And this is again where the teamwork comes in handy. Um, tell your guys, hey, I need you to move to the port side because I was dumb and I blew up a couple rocks. Um, but there's there's still something in there to extract. So once again, we'll take the ladder and we'll head up to the bridge. And for you veteran miners out there, I know this is repetitive, but we'll get to the rest of the video pretty shortly here. I am going to show refinery ops for those who, who haven't seen them. OK, so we know they went to the left somewhere. And those are not them. Let's see if, oh, oh, here's our rogue rocks over here. So um, what we can do from the pilot seat is we can go ahead and scan them and see uh, what's what's in them. Again, I'm hitting the V for Victor key. And then uh, once I highlight the rock, I'm holding down the left mouse button to scan them. This one has a ton of gold in it. I want to grab that one for sure. This guy. What's this guy have on it? He has Corundum, so I can care less, but I'll probably suck them both up. So I'll turn off my scan mode. Now, if you want to, you could try to um, use your your drone camera view here and figure out what, what's the best place to uh, position your ship to grab these rocks. However, I have found that just going up, I don't know, about... 20 degrees to 30 degrees about here just to where I can't see them. That should give me plenty of maybe a little bit less. That should give me plenty of articulation and the mining arm to be able to grab them. So I'm going to go right about there and hop out. <coughs> the fastest way to do solo mining here is to go down to the center turret. Um, the quick way to go down is to just drop down backwards. You'll take a tiny bit of damage, but it's faster than climbing down the ladder, which I wish we could just slide down the ladder rails. That would be a neat feature. Okay. So here we are in the center laser. It's already actually powered on. So um, I did want to show you what it looks like on the drone camera. So here's our cab extended from the ship. Okay. So here's that first rock. Here's that second rock easily within our range there. Um, and we're still in extraction mode, so we're going to go ahead and suck up this gold. And we'll go ahead and suck up this uh, corundum while we're at. We we'll probably had one of the rocks blow up, and it probably had a big chunk of gold in it. So, my bad, guys. But you, you, sometimes if you blow up a rock, especially the first crack, uh, you could do serious damage to your ship. So just be careful out there. Uh, we can see our cargo is nowhere near ready to actually go back to the refinery. But for the purposes of the video, we're going to go ahead and uh, do just that. OK, exiting the center turret seat. Go back up this ladder here. When we get to the station, guys, and, um, you know, some of the best mining is actually in the the uh, the air and halo asteroid belt. Um, it's really not around the stations here or on the various moons or planets. Um, this is just a convenient place to give you an example of what to do. But we are here in uh, the her L2 uh, area and there's her L2 right in front of us. And uh, I'm going to quantum over to her L2 and when we get there, we're going to store the ship. Make sure you store your ship, especially if you have Quantanium. I mean, after after I land, of course. And uh, then we're going to go inside um, and we're going to take the elevator down to the refinery and I will meet you there. All right, guys, so her L2, we're already here. We stored the ship. And we are making our way the long way down to the refinery section of the station. Um, you can get to the refineries at every uh, L1 Lagrange point. 
with every major planet. So Crew L1, Her L1, Microtech L1, and um, Arc L1. The only other uh, Lagrange point is Her L2, Lagrange point two for Hurston. Um, that also has a refinery section. We don't know yet about if Microtech is going to have any more. We're waiting on their Lagrange points to be put into the game besides L1. So we're making our way over to the... We're not going to the Mining Support Center this time. We're going up the stairs to the actual uh, refinement processing. So the first thing we can do if we want is we could just sell the ore if we wanted to. Um, selling the ore without being refined um, will net us 7600 bucks. Not too bad if you're in need for quick cash, but if you have some time, and it does take some time, to go ahead and do a full refinery job, head on over to the refinement center itself. So first thing we're going to do once we're in the refinery um, section here, we're going to select the material location as the Argo Mole. Note that this is PTU and current capacity is never going to be 0%. It's just there was a database reset. We're in PTU. No one's going mining, apparently. <clears throat> you can also see up here the station profile of um, what you get when you mine. And each station is a little bit different. Bores just happens to yield plus 4% here. So we're going to get a little bit better yield refining our Bores. And then picking the Argo Mole, it's going to tell you how much uh, inert material you have, refinable material, and free space. So we're going to hit Setup Work Order. And in the setup here, we get to choose what we want to refine. We're going to refine our gold, our corundum, our bores. Obviously, you're never going to find refine inert. And then you're going to choose the method. The Cormac method is the fastest and the cheapest. High speed, moderate cost, low yield. You can hit Get Quote here. It's going to cost us 962 credits. Um, it's going to only take 21 minutes, but we're going to get a low yield if we do this. You can see our, our Bore shield goes from 308 to 213. Typically, I do a Dynex solvination method. And um, if we get the quote on this, you can see we're going to get 304 out of 308 with the Bore Ace, but it's going to, and it's going to cause it's low cost 481, but it's going to take 17 hours. So that is the trade off here. You can do one of the other ones. Um, that is a high speed. Um, I forget which one of this. So let me find the other high speed one. There we go. Uh, no, not stuff the one we want. Here we go. High speed, high cost, moderate yield. Uh, that's the Gaskin process. Um, we would still lose quite a bit of our Borace, which is our money maker there. Um, so high cost and high yield, but low speed pyrometric chromolysis. Um, that would give us about the same. But uh, even though it says low speed, it would, two hours, we could get a really good yield, but it's going to be more expensive. So it's going to cut into your profit margin. So it really just I think it really comes down to time. Do you have the time to wait or do you want to make some money quick? So I do have some time to waste. I'm going to do therm thermonetic. Yeah, thermonetic deposition. And we're going to, you know, I don't, well, I don't. Ah, I did it again. There we go. Dynex solvination. Sorry, guys. This one costs the least amount, has the highest yield, but it takes the most time. So we're going to go ahead and confirm that. The work order was accepted. And so now it's 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 starting to uh, refine. And uh, in 17 hours, you'll get a notice that your job is done. You can come up here. You can load up your uh, your stuff into a transport ship. Don't load it back up into the mole. Load it up into a cargo ship. That you yes, you do need to claim your cargo ship or bring one over to the station. And make sure you have enough uh, uh, space in your cargo ship. And then you can fly to one of the planets, to one of the business districts there. And from there, you could then trade or sell your goods and actually make a decent profit. So with that, I have logged out of the terminal. Um, and I think what we're going to do next in the video is we're going to take a look at the, the loadout of the mole real quick. There's not that much to it. It's mostly systems. Uh, then we'll take a look at the brochure page. There's a web page for the Argo Mole. 
Uh, there's two different commercials. And then uh, instead of any type of dog fighting, I think we'll just see if we can get a crew together. and We'll do some multi-crew mining in the mole. And we'll show you that having, even if you're not using uh, lasers like the Lancet, but you add it to the rock, it will provide the benefits to the rock that you can then mine with the Helix. So you can mine Quantanium um, using the different uh, lasers all together to add the benefits. And you can add a mining gadget if you want. And then you can use the consumables as well to, to be able to get the mining done as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So with that, let's head on over to the loadout. We'll see you guys there. All right, guys. So welcome to the loadout of the Argo Mole here. And uh, this is the PTU version of Urkel.games if you want to check out the DBS calculator. Um we're, I don't really want to talk about weapons too much on the bowl, but there it does come with two fixed weapons. They are size two laser repeaters. It comes with those stock, those put out 402 DPS, uh, 800 bursts. And uh, yeah, if you get into a fight with this ship and it's not with another mole or like an Argo cargo, uh, I would just take off and get out of here. Let's look at the base stats for the Argo mole. Its role is medium mining. Uh, career is industrial, obviously. It's a size three ship. Crew size, this one says five. I could see that. I could see four crew resting, including a co-pilot or the pilot uh, with one person flying. Um, but really, I think it's a crew of four. Um, take that as you will. The cargo size shows 115 SCUs. Um, I don't believe the mole actually carries that. That may be what's in the game files, but the mole should just carry 96 SCU. Obviously, you can do a box mission in the mole, um, but maybe they're messing with uh, some of the stats in the game files. Um, you can only carry 96 SCU worth of minerals, and there's no other cargo that I know of in the mole. Um, it does say body and nose at zero hit points, and, and that may just be the game files right now as well, or Urkel's having an issue. Um, the SCM speed of the mole is 128 meters a second, afterburner speed of 1,090. You can see it's uh, pitch yaw and roll, very slow. 39 degrees in pitch, 36 in yaw, and 95 degrees a second in roll. And you can see it, it is a, a bigger ship. Uh, it does have size two components. So it's hydrogen capacity and quantum fuel capacity are larger. Um, I don't think the hydrogen's enough personally. I think it could go for more hydrogen because you're out there mining, but I'm sure it'll get tweaked at some point. And uh, you can buy the ship at the New Deal shipyard in Lorville in game for 5.1 million alpha UVC. If you want to buy it in real life, um, it costs about $315. It's a very expensive ship, um, but it is always available. You can always buy a mole whenever you want to. Okay, so let's look at the mining lasers. Uh, obviously, here you can mess around with them and pick out what you want. The front laser, I had the Impact 2 on there. Uh, one of the side lasers, I had a Lancet size 2. And yes, you can put smaller lasers onto these turrets, although I don't recommend that. And then I had a Helix 2 on the other uh, the other side, the starboard side. Uh, for, there are no missiles on the ship. There's no EMPs or quantum enforcement devices. There are shields. It does come with a bunch of civilian and industrial components. The shields are not horrible. They are size two civilian grade C uh, Chamalis, 7,500. So um, they're not the lowest like the RPALs. Um, but you may want to consider upgrading these shields because you are pretty vulnerable as a miner. Um, so I would say probably just go with the the 7MA Lorcas, which are the civilian uh, grade A shields, they still provide the highest level of hit point pool for shields. Um, if you really wanted to, you could get the FR-76s, which is the same hit point pool. They are more expensive, uh, but they do have some other benefits that the civilians do not. But my recommendation is two 7MA Lorcas, uh, civilian grade A's. Um, what I don't recommend is the industrials. Um, 
because the ramparts are the most expensive, being 53,000 a unit versus the Lorcas. Uh, the Loricas, I should say. The power plant, uh, if we look over here at the power side, it's at 13,000 out of 50,000. There's really no need to upgrade the power plant at all. It's an industrial grade C Genzel. It's a good power plant, pl plenty of power for anything we need. Uh, the cooler itself, again, we're using 466 out of 16,000 cooling units. There's no need to mess with the cooler. Uh, leave it stopped. The one thing, if you're going to upgrade anything on this ship, upgrade the quantum drive, please. It, it comes with an industrial gray B hurricane, which is one of the slowest drives of the game. Uh, the you look, it looks like it's smaller. Um, I would go ahead and put in a cross field, which go for about 59 or 60,000 alpha UEC. Um, it's probably the best value drive for the money, even though it is military grade C. And that's about it for the mole guys. There's, there's not that much to the mole. Um, even though PTU isn't showing it on here, there actually is a couple different paints and a couple different versions of the Argo mole. The first one is a special edition of the Argo mole called the carbon livery, which is kind of a limited, uh, darker gray livery of the Argo Mole. I actually particularly like it. Um, I, while I love the orange that comes with Argo as default, the carbon livery is probably my second favorite. I really like it. The other special edition happens to be called the Argo Mole Talus, and it is a limited uh, livery. It's also light gray and kind of has these grays and whites in, in in its color and it, it actually looks really good as well there are three paints that are purchasable for the argo mole um they just came out not too long ago um so i think they're still available for subscribers the first one uh being called the Aphorite, which is a medium dark blue and magenta coloring with dark cyan blue accents um, I, th I think it looks pretty good. It's, it's kind of got the, the purplish thing going on to me, just like Aphorite is kind of a bluish purplish in color. I believe the Dolavine, um, is a medium light gray coloring with medium dark shade of green accents. Again, only available into the subscriber store. And I think it's pretty neat as well. Some of these paints are used on other ships besides just the, the mole. I believe the Prospector comes with them, as does the, the, the ROCs. And finally, the last paint um, that someone could purchase for the Argo Mole uh, outside of the game in the subscriber store is called Hadonite, which is if you are doing any hand mining, it is the most valuable hand mineral you can mine. It is a pale shade of red coloring with dark gray accents, and I think it's my least favorite out of all the paints for the Argo Mall. Um, I think my favorite is the base orange model. And then after that, the, the carbon and then probably the Aphorite, Dolavine, the tail of Talus, and then the Hat Knight. So there you go. There is all of the, the paints and, and all of that stuff for the Argo Mall. Let's head on over to the kind of the brochure page of the mole, but it's, it's a website now, uh, very similar to the nomad. And let's see what that looks like. Okay. So as we can see on the, the website here, the mole, you can see, uh, this graphic of all the lasers going at once. Um, it is pretty cool when that happens. Um, it's very satisfying to have people mining the same rock and stuff. It's a real sense of accomplishment. If we scroll down, we can see it says power mining. Oh, missed that one. Let's go back. Uh, tap into your full potential with the combined force of Argo's patented trilateral mining system. The mole has a total of 24 mineral pods, each holding 12 SCU. Eight pods are usable at one time. When they're full, either head home or jettison them for collection by another vessel and carry on mining, which is kind of what the expanse is going to be there for. Distinct style. The Argo's pragmatic, no-nonsense approach to ship design is celebrated in the unmistakable silhouette of the mole. Just one look at this machine and you know it means business. 
And then multi-crew. Notice there's four, not five. Three independently controlled articulated extraction stations allow for maximum power and near limitless versatility. The mole lives by the adage, many hands make for light work. And so here's one of the videos that we're going to watch after, after we finish this brochure section. And it talks about the mole. Explore. Trilateral mining with all the different mining turrets. Um, we've already talked about mineral capacity and crew capacity. Hardware, the outsized power plants get the job done with, without the stress of overheating. True. Um, the size power, the size two laser heads have twice the range of the mole's competitors for safer, more versatile mining. And that is the key with the mining heads. They're not necessarily more powerful. They have more range. So you can mine further off, which is important when you have three different stations moving uh, uh, around. Control. Find the perfect position with uh, nuanced controls and the Argo's most intuitive interface ever, which it works fine. And then the trilateral mining mode. Mole by the numbers. There's all the, see, this says max crew four. So I'm going to say max crew is four. And there's some pictures of the, of the mole here. We've already seen the interior uh, and done a full tour of the mole, but it's cool that it does. It's cool that it has the, these crazy engines and, and the crew living quarters. It, it, it's very industrial. It's very cozy ship for four people to live in, but nevertheless, pretty darn cool. Here is the carbon and the, and the Talus uh, liveries. And uh, yeah. And then uh, it tells you about upgrading to an Argo mole, um, take your mining to the next level. And then here, of course, you can buy the ship $315 uh, US, uh, or you can buy it as part of a industrial revolution pack. So let's head on over to YouTube and let's uh, watch these commercials. Out here, you've got your crew and your ship. And the only thing that matters is getting the job done. This is your workshop, your playground, your command center. This is your multi-operator laser extractor. Argo Astronautics. Building your future. We're here at a super secret off site location that definitely isn't an Argo production facility to get a first look at their 2949 mole multi crew mining machine. He's not only a paragon of alliteration, but he's being touted as an excavation revelation with a more user-friendly control interface and sport-inspired stuff. Good news for all you aspiring diggers out there. Releasing in just a few weeks, you'll get to see firsthand the bonding experience that is simultaneous mining, just like Jimmy and me. All right, guys, so welcome back to uh, the video. And this section of the video is going to be on multi-crew mining in the Argo Mole. We have Geek Citizen over here helping us, Finger Blaster Actual, and Kalis47. They are each going to man one of the mining turrets. Um, guys, the center turret is an Impact 2. The starboard turret is a Helix 2, and the port turret is a Landsat 2. Um, they all have filter consumables or uh, uh, filters on them, and then each one has uh, one consumable that if you need to use uh, the helix as a lifeline for sure so um let's i'm gonna go ahead and man up the pilot seat if you guys want to just pick a turret hop in it and we're gonna keep the rock we're gonna just go up to any rock and uh scan it and then show the audience here what happens when you guys put on the lasers without any power and then we'll, we'll actually do a little bit of mining and I'll be bouncing around between first person and drone view. Okay, ship's ready. Actual starboard. Kalis on port. Roger. I'm in center. All right, we're flying around. Let's go find a rock.
All right, I see a cluster dead ahead, about 11 kilometers. So who's in the port, Laser? Kalos. Okay. So Kalos, I'm going to have you initiate first. And um, I'm going to just have you put the land set on the rock without any power. And I want to show the audience here how, how it changes the instability and the resistance. Okay. Okay, let me slow down because we're kind of moving up on a rock. rock will actually scan that to, i can't even target it from angle i can't either no, oh it's because i'm at the wrong angle this guy won't scan i'll have to go to a different one I swear they fixed that but okay Okay, we got a rock about 3,000 meters dead ahead. Dead ahead now, dead ahead. <laughs> we Slowing down. Okay, this one's purple, so it looks like we can scan it here. Looks like it's aluminum, corundum, and vexillite. I'm going to go ahead and initiate a scan. Okay, so it is scanned. I'm going to come up a little bit so the port laser can uh, go ahead and put its... Um, are you in position to put your, your land set on it? Uh, no. Can you either translate up a little bit more or or uh, pitch up? Okay, that's good. Okay. Okay, I'm at 0%. Okay. Cut. Go ahead and cut your laser laser off what do you have for instability right now uh 0 0.74 i think it's hard to okay. read okay go ahead and put your laser on it because that's what i have okay it's rescanning now okay and so now... the instability went down to 0.19 so just to let the folks at home now this is a 5000 mass rock i'm gonna go to the left a little bit Okay, uh, who's in the helix? Actual. Actual, can you put your laser on it? No power? You want the lancet to stop? No, laser no, on. keep keep the lancet on. So instability also went down again to 0 0.09. And can we throw the impact on it, please? And instability went up to 0.1. So let me show the folks at home from drone view what it looks like. So we have all three mining lasers going at once. The impact, the helix, and the land set. Okay, are you guys confident you can mine at the same time? Sure. I'll, right. I'll be the main miner. Okay, let's crack this rock. If you need me to move the ship, let me know. And guys, everyone, a lot of, everyone go to 30% and I'll do go from there. Guys, that that is definitely a strategy here. 
where if the center or whatever turret wants to be the main miner, the other two mining heads can provide benefits to the rock just by putting zero power on it. Helix at 30%. Lance it at 30%. Rock is about to fracture. Screenshot for posterity. There we go. Our rock is now fractured. Okay, boys. Fire it well. Go ahead and uh, mine up whatever rocks you want and scoop them up. So for the folks at home, this is really one of the other big capabilities of the mole is now we have three lasers going on these, these other rocks, which are going to have to get broken up. But because they're much smaller mass, it's much easier to get into them and it's much faster. So these guys can break it up and, and just scoop it, scoop up whatever they need and we can head on out. I would so have say, you showed about overcharging a rock? What happens yet? Have you recorded that? No, that's it's. This isn't a mining video. This is just. The I know. I know. I'll just check. But yeah, it makes a big boom, guys. You don't want to overcharge the rock. There we go. Excellent work. Go ahead and, I would say, don't scoop up anything 100 percent inert, but uh. You know, if it's 50% inert or Not less, purple yet, so. yeah, there are some purples out there. If it's 50% inert or, le or less, go ahead and scoop it up. Got me. Okay, we'll take a look at what this looks like from the pilot seat. Not the greatest view. I definitely prefer the drone view. And if someone's having a hard time with a, a rock that has high instability or something, I would say the Landsec could definitely hop on that at zero power and just provide a really good instability boost. There we go. Go ahead and scoop them up, guys. <laughs> Just remember to not not cross the streams. Thanks for that important safety tip. Anything decent out there? Uh, nothing too great. Yeah, it was just the first rock we came across. Normally, folks, we would uh, just skip this rock because it didn't have high uh, value content in it. You know, one day, I think aluminum might actually have value. A uh, good place to go is Ariel. If you want to, if you don't want to quantum mine, that's uh, Ariel's a good place to get big tricks or something like that. Yep, Ariel's good. Um, Aberdeen's pretty good for other minerals. Mm -hmm. Eventually, go ahead. Pitch up five degrees, please. Pitch up five degrees high. Five degrees. I think 
Thank you. Need more. Stand by. Yes, once they're done collecting, maybe pitch up uh, 15, 10 degrees. Roger. 10 degrees. Oh, collecting. Very good. Oh, no joy. I think we're out of harvestable materials. Oh, there's two more rocks down here. The are three I can, The two that I can reach are right. outside our spec. Okay. Garbage. Yeah, they're all garbage. All right, Roger that. We will head out of nearly full our mining mode here, our scam mode, and we will head back to the station. And it is as simple as that, folks. Um, all of our miners are coming back inside uh, the mole. And uh, yeah, we're going to head back to her L2 and we're going to go refine this. And uh, I'm going to pull out the uh, the refined materials I had from the first part of the video. And then we'll go run over and take that to a trade destination. And uh, thank you guys for the help with the mining. Yeah, babe. You're welcome. All right. All righty. Stay tuned for the next part of the video. All right, guys. So we are back into the refinement center. And wouldn't you know it, we, uh, the patch went live as I was filming this. And so I had to go do a whole nother uh, mining run in the mole. But no matter, I still had it refined here. Um, I do have a completed work order. Um, it has a little bit different stuff here, but uh, the work order is complete. And I uh, grabbed my handy dandy misc hull A here. See, the mole isn't even on here to export anything into because it doesn't have any actual storage space. So uh, I'm going to export everything into my misc hull A, which has a 64 SCU capacity. And I only have 11 SCU of material from that. I, I basically did an entire rock. So I'm going to go ahead and collect it in my misc hull A. And it has been delivered. So let's uh, exit out of this guy. And we will head out to the ship. And we'll go ahead and go trade it. Um, I, I did choose, for the sake of brevity, the, the fastest refining method. Because uh, I didn't want to wait an entire day. Because I, I actually did not plan on... Um, the packs going live and having to finagle some different stuff here. But we'll take the long elevator ride back up. Now you can call pretty much any cargo ship you want. I mean, it depends on how many SCU of uh, refined cargo that you have. The thing about once you refine the cargo, or I should say refine the minerals, is you have to take it to one of the planets to sell. Um, I don't believe you can sell it anywhere else. You might be able to sell it at an admin somewhere, depending on what it is. But like Baxalite and things like that, you're going to get the most money and the most profit by actually taking it to either Lorville, the Central Business District, or the Trade and Development Divisions at uh, Crusader, Microtech, or Arc Corp. And here we go. And this is just a little, small little bonus. Um... Some of you may have seen my video on the hole. Some some may not have. This is the hole with the the brand new paint that came in uh, uh, release uh, Alpha 317. And there it is. You can see that it's stored. I actually don't own the hole. It's a loaner. I own a whole C. And I'm not sure why the other one's there. But let's go ahead and head out to pad four. And you'll get to see um, the new paint for the hull A, at least. And once we get out there and we get inside the hull, we'll we'll go ahead and complete the loop by heading over to Lorville. And we'll just do a fast forward here because it's a short little trip. <clears throat> so you'll get a list of some hopefully pretty cool music. Uh, we'll see what I score for this. And uh, then we'll unpause when we get to the CBD. Um, I can tell you that because I had to do this a little differently, 
um, because of the packs actually dropping. So um, you can see that there's barely any cargo on, in the hole A. There's hardly any cargo. Normally these things are like full up, these little racks here uh, with 64 SU. This is 11 SU right there. So not a whole lot going on there. Um, we're gonna enter our ship. Anyway, um, I did choose the fastest refining method um, with the highest yield, but also the highest cost and the highest speed, which uh, just happened to be, I believe it was, oh, I don't remember what it was, Gaskin process maybe. But uh, it cost me tw about 20,000 credits to refine. So let's see how much I get when I actually sell all this stuff. Hopefully a decent amount. So here's the Miss Cole with uh, one of its new paints. It's like a black and kind of gold streamlined uh, paint. And uh, yeah, a little bit different than the normal chrome that we would get. And we'll go ahead and take off there. Our gear is up. Let's find good old Hurston on the map. Set our waypoint. Okay, there it is. And we'll go ahead and go into fast forward mode as soon as we quantum. And uh, we'll see you at the central business district. Okay, so we are back at Central Business District in Lorville. And yes, I know that was a fantastic landing. Um, no need to embarrass myself anymore. It looks like this whole console flickering thing is still not fixed. So super job on that. Um, anyway, selling from the Miss Call A. Um, about 11 SCU, but about 12 SCU. Um, the aluminum, we get almost nothing. 360. The diamond, we get 499. So not even a thousand yet. Uh, got a little more for the corundum, just there's so much of it. So we're at roughly 2000. And the Bexlite sold for 12,320. So overall, because I chose the fastest uh, processing method, I actually lost, um, <laughs> cause I wasn't picky or nothing like that. when I, when I mined anything, we lost roughly uh, 6,000 alpha UEC. Um, so it definitely behooves you to use the slower methods uh, for higher yield uh, that cost the least amount of money because you're gonna make more money at the end. And it, it behooves you to be a little more picky. Obviously, uh, don't suck up a nerd if you don't have to go for the more valuable mineral. The most valuable mineral is quantanium, but it doesn't have to be quantanium. Laronite, Bexalite, um, anything really with an ite or an eight 
or an uh, ATE or something like that, those are typically more valuable than things we know, like diamond, gold, uh, copper, corundum, th- ores that we already have, not worth as much as uh, the minerals that are don't really exist in real life, um, with quantitative being the most, but also the most volatile, um, at least when you're mining it. So if you do mine quantitative, uh, make sure it's the very last thing you suck up and then you just hightail it to the station or else it'll blow up your shit. So with that, uh, that is the selling of the Argo Mole. Um, now to restart the game loop, I pretty much take my cargo ship, which is for this case, the Miss Cole. It could be anything. It could be a Caterpillar. Uh, it could be one of a number of cargo ships. And you, I would take that back to her L2 where my mole is at and go uh, store that ship, go grab it, hop in my mole or my prospector and keep on mining. And you do make fairly good money. Um, when you do it the right way and you, uh, you know, you, you, if you wait and you get a bunch of minerals before you actually take it to sell, you'll make more money in a big chunk. So there you go, guys. Uh, now on to the next part of the video. Thanks for watching so far. Well, hey, everybody, thanks for tuning in to the video on the Argo Mole. I hope you learned a little bit about the mole and the things it can do on both single player and multi crew mining. I want to thank my three miners, Kalis, Finger Blaster Actual, and Geek Citizen, who is running around the cockpit here. Um, I think he saw a squirrel. Anyway, um, as we're sitting out here at Hurrell 2, uh, just thinking about multi-crew mining and, and the, the things we can do with the mole. You can really make a lot of money out in the game with the mole. Mining is probably the number one profession as far as making money goes. And I highly recommend you try it. It is quite an expensive price tag for a ship to buy in real life at $315. I think it's a little bit overpriced. But, you know, the alternative is uh, a $100 plus prospector or to even go with like a rock or something like that, which are all around $100 or uh, even go for the Orion, which will come out one day soon, TM. Um, but those are your options mining um, and you will make quite a bit of money in game, whether solo or grab some friends like I did and go multi crew mining. It actually is a lot of fun and you can stay out there and make some some bank so thank you for watching don't forget to like and subscribe to the video if i've earned your like i appreciate you stopping by remember you can catch us streaming every thursday at 7 p.m mountain time uh, for fisting java save the universe or at 9 a.m mountain time for java with java where shenanigans have been ensuing lately and uh, don't forget to stop by the discord and say hello we're always looking for people to stream with and play with and uh there's probably somebody in there that needs your help. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. And remember, if the fist don't get you, the lightning bolt will. Good night, Stanley.